So the unit we are in now is conic sections, which are exactly what they sound like. They're what you get when you take a cone, like this one, and you section it. So you can see if we cut this cone perpendicular to the top, parallel to the top, excuse me, then we get a circle. And then as we increase the slope of our cut, we get different shapes. And the shapes that we can get from slicing our cone, draw our imaginary cone here. We cut it parallel to the base. We end up with our first conic section, a circle. the one that we are going to explore farther now. If we cut it a little bit not perpendicular, a little bit more slope to the cut, not a lot, we call that slope of the cut the eccentricity, which we're not really going to get into, but if we cut it a little bit more, then our cross section here would be an ellipse. If we make the slope even steeper, if we increase the eccentricity of that cut so much that we don't actually pass through both sides of the cone, but rather only one side of the cone and the base, like this, and what we end up with is a parabola. And what that would look like, you've seen the parabola, but we got this. And then if we continue even farther cutting that cone, what we end up with, with a vertical cut, maximum eccentricity, so a cut straight down, perpendicular to the base, is a hyperbola, which looks like two parabolas, one opening up, one opening down, or to the left and right, which we'll talk about when we get to that particular one, but a hyperbola like this. So we get four very different shapes. The circle, the ellipse, the parabolas, and the hyperbolas from this cone. We can even get a line as well. But we're not going to talk about the linear ones because they're trivial. So our unit now is going to focus on one conic section per unit, per, per section, for lack of a better word. Right now, circles, and then we'll go to ellipses, and then we will do parabolas and then hyperbolas. And the nice thing about all of these sections is that because they come from a cone, they all have a very similar construction to their equations, which is why they're all grouped in the same unit. That's what we're going to be looking at as we progress. So we're going to use the circle as our jumping off point, our initial conic section, for a couple of reasons. One, it's very simple. Not a lot going on in a circle. And two, the construction of the parent equation, which is what we're going to see for all of these, really, is also very simple and easy to explain. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the circle right now. So let's look at a circle. There it is. Draw a circle. Circle. Relatively boring, but we do have a few interesting points 
on the circle. And that is the center of the circle. And then this outside edge of the circle, which is equidistant from the center for any point that we choose. So the way we describe this outside edge is say from the center, if you go R units, you'll hit the outside edge called the radius. So we have the radius of the circle there to any point on the outside. Now, if we want to construct an equation for this circle, we need to find some way of describing it in terms of x and y, horizontal and vertical components. We've already really seen how to do that with trigonometry and the unit circle. So let's make this the unit circle by saying that the radius is 1 and that the center of this circle is at 0, 0. So the easiest possible circle we can imagine. 0, 0 for the center, radius is 1. And then what we found on the unit circle is that every part of this circle corresponds to a triangle. A triangle that looks like this. So there's our triangle. And because our center is at 0, 0 and our radius is 1, we know that this is the x and this is the y. similar to vectors and breaking them up into horizontal and vertical components. So the same idea. We have an x, we have a y. Now we can start doing algebra, which is writing things in terms of x and y, or a horizontal and a vertical component. Imagine, we can make infinitely many triangles around this circle, but every single one of them would have an x and a y, and the relation to that x and y and the radius is our parent form. Parent form, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. In fact, it is just the Pythagorean theorem. I mean, it's a cone, which is just a big triangle, a circle, which is made up of infinitely many triangles. So the easiest way to connect them is to look at the equations that we get from those triangles, which is the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared is the parent form of this circle. But we know that not all of our circles have a radius of 1 get rid of this. And not all of our circles start at the origin 0, 0. So we're going to now let our circle start at an arbitrary point, hk. And the radius will also be unknown. It's just r. We don't know what it actually is value-wise. And this point on the end of the circle going to be a b just for fun so that now if I want to know how to write the equation of this it becomes a lot more difficult because this is not x and this is not y they correspond to distances on the x-axis and the y-axis but they're not just the x and the y because my circle no longer starts at 0, 0. But luckily here, we also already have a method for dealing with this. When our parent function changes, or when aspects of my function change, we have a very easy way to change the parent function. We use transformations.
transformation form. Now with transformation, very general rule. With functions, it's horizontal, inside, opposite, vertical, outside, same. Hyovas, which we'll write down. Hyovas. But this is not a function. It does not pass the vertical line test. So we can drop the horizontal and the vertical Just say, look, if it's inside, do the opposite. If it's outside, do the same. And we have to look at whatever variable that particular transformation happens to be associated with. So in this particular case, we want to move the circle from the origin to HK. So I need a horizontal transformation. I need to move this from 0, 0 to HK. And I need to increase the radius from 1 to R. So the transformations that we're going to use are translations, addition and subtraction, and multiplication or dilation or the, the radius. That actually works out pretty easily. If I want to move something from 0 to H using a translation, I want to slide that to the right H units. Then all I have to do is X minus H squares, the inside opposite effect. For Y, the same thing, which is why we drop the horizontal and vertical, plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So that's our transformational form, the inside opposite, outside same, which we're not really going to have a lot of outside because for these, they're not functions. It's a lot easier to use the inside form, just keep everything grouped. That way it's all together, which you'll see why that's better because of expanded form, which I'm not going to have. Okay. You can see all we really did was move this from the parent form, where the center is at 0, 0, to our new center, HK, by using transformations. This is a translation. It's an addition. So it's moving the graph left or right because it's with X. This is also a translation. It's moving the graph up or down. And I know that is an up or down movement because it's grouped with the y variable. And although we have r squared for both of these, this is a dilation. We're moving the r. We're stretching the radius by a certain amount. And we're using that Pythagorean theorem as our baseline to get this. Okay, circles are easy. This is really all it is. All you have to do for a circle is figure out where is the center and what's the radius. And if we have those two things, then we can graph the circle and we can write its equation. So let's look at a couple examples now. There it is. In this one, it says, identify the center and radius and sketch the graph. So we look, x squared plus y squared equals 9. This is our parent form. So it is a center. Because we have no translations of 0, 0. And the radius is going to be the square root of 9, which is... 3. Then I can easily graph that by starting with my center at 0, 0, and then applying that radius. And the easiest way to do that is the four cardinal directions. So up, down, left, and right, north, south, east, and west. But we just go from the center, three units in those directions, 
and then just connect them with our circle. Like that. That's it. We've graphed the circle. Make sense? Let's do a couple that are not in parent form that require a little bit more work because we have to recognize those transformations. So these two. Same instructions. Identify the center and the radius. And then we want to graph. So for number two, my center at HK, that would be inside these parentheses, HK, 2 and 2. Inside opposite, remember, so if it's inside that grouping symbol, it's going to be opposite. So we're going to use 2 and 2 for the center. My radius, I look here, 16. I know the square root of 16 is 4. So that's my radius. And then I just apply those to that graph. So center at 2, 2, radius of 4. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right away from that center. 1, 2, 3, 4 up. 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 down. And then I just connect those with the best circle that I can draw. There. Circle. For number 3, we have x plus 4 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 4. So to identify that center, I'm looking inside the parentheses for the addition and subtraction on x and y, those translations. I have a plus 4, but because it's inside opposite, I know it's going to be negative 4. And I have a plus 2, but again, inside opposite, I know that's going to be negative 2. So I have a center of negative 4, negative 2. My radius, if I look after the equal sign here, I have this 4. I know that's r squared, so I take the square root. The radius is 2. And so I need to graph that by putting my center at negative 4, negative 2. And then using the radius to find a couple points, in this case four points, on the outside edge of my circle, two points away. The easiest ones are up, down, uh, left, and right. And then I graph. Again, the best circle I can make, there's my circle on that one. Now that's if we are given the equation and the equation is formatted in this transformational form. So really the easiest possible case. Now let's look at going the other direction. If we are given the graph of the circle and we want to write the equation, or if we're just given some describing information about a circle, some of its features, and we want to write the equation from that. So graphs first. Use the information provided to write the standard form of the equation of a circle. So they're giving me a graph, and they want me to write the standard form, which is the transformational form of the circle. So we want to write x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So we look at this first circle, number four. The center is four units to the left of the origin and four units up, which we typically call negative four, four. So that's going to be my H and K. Those are my translations from the origin. So I can start out X minus negative four is X plus four squared. Hey, we're just filling in the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. x minus h squared plus y minus k. So y minus 4 is equal to, and now i got to figure out my radius. So I look, is it, oh, there's the center. So 1, 2, out, 
My radius is 2. Square of that is 4. For number 5, the center of my circle looks like it's there, but it's not. It is about there. And I'm going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So my center here is at 0, negative 1 which gives me the first part of this, x minus 0 squared is just x squared, y minus negative 1 is y plus 1, and then the radius. Now this one does have a whole number radius. I believe it's 5. We can count to make sure. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which it is. But what if it wasn't? What if I didn't see that radius as being 5, or all I had was a point on the outside edge of the circle? See, this one. Hope that works. At negative 4, negative 4. How could I find the radius there. Good, yeah, the distance formula. The distance formula is how I would find the radius. All I gotta do is find the distance between these two points. Remember, we did that before as well. In this case, the radius would be the square root of h minus a squared plus y minus k squared, or excuse me, k minus b squared, and then under the square root. So in this case, we'll have 0 plus 4 and it's just the Pythagorean theorem again. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Circles are just really big things filled with infinite limited triangles. Infinite limited triangles in here, so we can use those triangle equations to access properties of the, the circle. That's what we're doing. Negative 1 plus 4. We'll write it all out here even though I ran out of room. That's the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, which in this case is the square root of 16 plus 9. Square root of 25, which is 5 because we're squaring it. We're just going to use the 25 in our equation. R squared because at the end of our equation. So if R is equal to 5, R squared is 25. But these, again, this is fairly simple. We have the graph. So I go, like, well, there's the center, and then I can count for the radius. And if it's not a whole number, I can use the distance formula there. But what if instead... The circle is just described to us. It's going to be our last example because this video is getting kind of long. I don't want to go over 25 minutes, so we'll see. Now, on number six, it tells me the center and the radius. So, great. It's given me all the information that I need. The center is at 2, negative 7. So, x minus 2 squared inside opposite plus y plus 7 squared, and then is equal to r squared, so 2 squared is 4. So we have x minus 2 squared plus y plus 7 squared equals 4. But on number 7, it gives me the center, 3, negative 10, so I've got this part, but then it gives me the area, 16 pi, which is not the radius. So how do I fill in the last part? For number 7, I can start. I know it's x minus 3 squared. My center is at positive 3, so inside opposite x minus 3, and then squared. Plus y plus 10. Very good. My center is at negative 10 for the y coordinate, so inside opposite would be y plus 10. And then I need to equal that to my radius squared. But all I have is the area. So 
16 pi. But the other thing I know about the area of a circle, the way that I connect the area of this circle, 16 pi, to the value of the radius, which is what I'm trying to find, is that the area of a circle is pi r squared, which means r squared is equal to 16. If 16 pi and pi r squared are equal, then r squared must be the 16, and that's the value that I need to complete my equation of that circle.